Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Astrophysics Research Basics. This is episode three, and today we're going to be learning about how to analyze our photometry data. Let's extract some numbers from our data. So for this lesson, you'll need some basic knowledge of Python, so hopefully you have some. I will be using Votutils, which is a commonly used package in astronomy. From Python. So we will be learning how to do aperture photometry, which I am specifying because there is another type of photometry called PSF photometry. So in today's video, we will specifically be learning how to do aperture photometry. So in astronomy, there are two ways to refer to the brightness of an object. We can use flux, which is the absolute units of brightness, or we can use magnitude, which is a measure of the brightness in comparison to a zero point. And there are various magnitude systems that are used. Keep this difference in mind as we go through today's lesson. For this example, we're going to be talking about how to do photometry on stars, which are probably the simplest objects you can analyze. They just look like kind of little points of light on your data frame. You have a data frame with those points of light on it, aka stars, but those points aren't actually points, right? They look more like smallish circles right? <laughs> so to measure the entire flux we get from a star, we need to include all the light from that small circle. We can do this by defining an aperture around the light and summing the amount of counts within that aperture. Let's get into the coding. So I'm going to share my screen. Do, 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 do. So before we start with the aperture stuff, we'll want to make sure to import a few things. So we're going to import from Fotutils, import aperture geometry and circular aperture. Make sure, first of all, you have Fotutils properly installed. <laughs> and then from Fotutils, that aperture will import circular annulus and aperture stats. And then we'll also import math. We're going to be doing some math. Yay. All right, so we'll go through an example using faux utils and to firstly to define this aperture, we need the center of the aperture as well as the radius of the aperture. So remember the aperture is, is surrounding that little circle of light that is our star. So ideally you would find the exact center of your star using a program like Source Extractor or some other program that you, you could use in Python. The common one is Source Extractor. But we're not going to go into that for now because it's kind of complicated. So we'll just assume that you've obtained the position of your star or you've estimated it somehow. So you can thus define your aperture as such. So we're going to define a position where we have our aperture. So we'll have our position, our x position in our pixel value, and then the y position. So these will be the pixels of your your frame and then we'll define a radius for that aperture for how big it is and we'll just say it's like three pixels so this is the radius in pixels okay and then we'll just define our aperture as a circular aperture with the position and then the radius so i should note that you can also do this you can make lots of apertures at once by just creating a list of these things. So a list of all of these positions in this form. So if you turn this position into a list of these two values, um, then you can make a circular aperture that contains a bunch of different positions in them, all with this same radius. So this could be particularly helpful if you want to speed things up. Um, you can create a bunch of different circular apertures at once. But for now, we'll just assume that you have a single position. Okay, so then um, this thing, is created. So now we want to sum the counts inside of that aperture using the aperture photometry function. Let's do that. So we'll just call it photo table because it'll produce a table for us. So aperture photometry, and then we'll include our data and then the aperture. So data um, basically is the data from your data frame. So ideally, um, I think you'd assume that your data is a FITS file. So in the FITS file, you can get the data, which is a NumPy array, ideally. 
And so um, this here will be the array that includes all of the data from your FITS file. Okay, so this gives you a table with the aperture sum column. I'll write it out. So the aperture sum column is the sum of the counts within the aperture. So we can't unfortunately use this number directly because it also includes the counts from the sky itself. So the sky itself uh, kind of produces some, some kind of light. So unless you're out in space, you'll have to subtract that amount of light that the sky itself emits. So to do this, we will make an annulus. An annulus is basically a donut. So we'll make a donut around um, the space around our aperture to calculate the background light that's in that area where our aperture is. So ideally, you know, you want that that donut to be close to where your aperture is because the background amount of background light you get could shift depending on where it is in your image. So ideally, we'll make it right by our aperture. The outer edge of this annulus, so the outer edge of the donut, is defined by R out, and the inner edge is defined by R in. So we'll see that as I type it here. But remember, so just keep in mind that you um, should set your R in and R out values, the, basically setting the width of the annulus, to make sure that that annulus does not include any other strong sources, such as like other stars or, um, I don't know, maybe you have galaxies in your image or whatever, but making sure to exclude as much of that as possible, that's what you want to do. All right, so we'll make the annulus, annulus aperture. We'll use the circular annulus function. So we'll want the same position as we had before, and then R in, we'll just give it two random values since I don't have any data I'm using here. I'm just, you know, typing this out for y'all. So we'll just say that it's five. So our radius up here for our original aperture was three. So we want it to be at least three or greater. So we'll just call it five. And then the outer edge, will be 10, for example, or it could be smaller, whatever, but however thick it, it can be without including other stars or other things in the area. So if you have a really crowded field, it might be super small, right? If there's hardly anything in the field, maybe you can include a ton of area around it. Okay, and then we'll want to do some math. So basically, we'll do aperture stats, aperture, Stats. So we'll want to do some math on this aperture, so, or the annulus. So we'll take our data and then include our annulus aperture. And then we want to take the mean of the background, or I guess the median, if there's a lot of outliers, but um, usually mean or median, and then multiply it by the area of our aperture. Not the area of the annulus, the area of the aperture because you want to get the total amount of light from within that aperture. So we'll take the, we'll get the, the mean. So aperture stats conveniently has a mean. So we'll just take the mean. And then the total background will be the mean multiplied by the area of the aperture. So remember, it's not the area of the annulus, it's the area of the aperture. That's why we're specifying that here. <laughs> Be very careful about that. Okay, so now we just need to subtract that background from our aperture sum. So we'll call it background sub. So we'll um, take the table that we have and remember it's called, the, and remember the column is called aperture sum. And we'll subtract, oops, subtract the total background from that. Okay, nice. Okay, so now we can convert this new sum to what's called an instrumental magnitude. So we use a simple calculation here. So well, the instrumental magnitude equals, um, it's negative 2.5 times the log 10. So this is when we're using this, the math that we imported earlier. So the log 10, log base 10 of R, summed counts. This is called the instrumental magnitude. 
but the instrumental magnitude isn't really that useful. So we want to convert that to an absolute magnitude which we can use in our science. Whatever you choose to do with this, this number, these numbers, um, we want a number we can actually use. So remember those standard stars that we discussed in the previous video, episode two. Hopefully you remember those. And hopefully there are a few of them in your frame or you took other frames with them. So hopefully you have some standard stars. What you'll want to do is do this process, do this process for a bunch of standard stars and then plot them against their absolute magnitude. So standard stars are standard because they have a known magnitude an absolute magnitude and those magnitudes will vary based on the color so you'll want to choose a, a color that matches the filter of ccd that you used so ccds will have various filters an example could be b filter or v filter whatever color filter it is using you'll want to look up the absolute magnitude of your standard stars in that filter and you can use a database like what i use is simbad Simbad.mistra.fr. So this is a, a database that I've often used to look up stuff. So you can use Simbad to look up the absolute value in various colors, uh, but you'll want to, you know, look those up for your, your standard stars. And then you'll plot them. So you'll plot them and it'll make like a line, hopefully. So you'll, it'll have the, the instrumental magnitude versus or instrumental magnitude and then the absolute magnitude. So it'll look like a line. And uh, once you have that plot, you can fit the points with that line using any fitting package in Python that you'd like, or I don't know, maybe you could do it in MATLAB or something like, however you want to fit those, those um, points. Then you can take that fit and use it to predict the actual magnitude of the data, the star that you're, you are analyzing. So that's how you would figure out the absolute magnitude in whatever filter your CCD is for your star. Hopefully you understood this coding that I did. Um, if not, leave some questions in the comments and I'll try to answer them. <laughs> Hopefully this works because I didn't test it out. <laughs> ah. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next episode of Astrophysics Research Basics. Bye bye!